The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. I'd like to welcome you back to another KevCam Night class tonight. Tonight, I have Greg Payton helping out with uh, any questions or concerns and making sure that uh, I stay on my A-game for you guys. Greg, you with us? Good evening, everybody. And uh, Steve Walsh is supposed to be in here with us, but uh, I think he fell asleep on the couch, so we'll just let him slide for tonight. <laughs> But um, I do see a lot of names in here that are familiar, so we won't go through the uh, the boring intro, but uh, we will get the ball rolling with uh, T-slot cutting tonight. Um, so I do have two different parts to show different two different styles of T-slot cutting uh, for you guys. Um, and with that being said, we will get the ball rolling right away. All right, so on this particular part right here, um, this first example, what I'll do is show you guys um, just a one-sided T-slot, and then on our next part, we will do like a T-slot working all the way around the outside of the part. So we'll come to our 2.5D tab, and we will click on T-slot. Now, for your geometry, um, this does get a little confusing um, for some of you guys. So uh, what you want to do is for your geometry that you're picking, you will want to grab the inside where you where the cutter meets the wall. Uh, hopefully that makes sense for everyone. So for my physical geometry, I'm just going to click the single line geometry right here. Um, don't go off of the outside edge because the outside edge of the T-slot cutter will just come in there. So we basically need to tell it the further, furthest most inner part of the T-slot itself, okay? And we will go ahead and accept that geometry. And based on the arrow direction, we will be uh, conventional cutting. And we'll go ahead and grab our tool. And let's go ahead and show a picture here. Um, if we want, let's go ahead and throw a holder on there. Okay. And with our T-slot cutter, I should kind of go through this a little bit here. With our T-slot cutter um, is basically like just like setting up um, an end mill or anything else. So just kind of start at the top and work way down. So we're our diameter is going to be 36 millimeters. Uh, we're not running any corner radius on the upper or the lower. Uh, our arbor diameter is 12 millimeters, and our shoulder diameter is, or I'm sorry, our arbor is 12 millimeters, and our shoulder diameter is also 12 millimeters. So if you guys do have a reduced shank, um, you guys can put this in right here. Our overall length right here, and our outside holder, which is controlling where our tool holder is being located. And then our cutting length is how thick is our T-slot cutter. Now the flutes are all based off of, think of the flutes as being the number of teeth. So how many teeth are on that T-slot cutter? Um, now this is not any reference um, question. This is more reference for um, when you're setting up the tool more than anything. So we can go ahead and accept that. Now the levels are gonna be uh, just a little bit different as well. So what it's actually looking for is not an upper level, but we're looking at the ceiling height. So I wanna know the very top of my T-slot. So I can go ahead and grab that. It's gonna be negative two millimeters and the floor of my T-slot. So we're gonna have a total depth or a total width of 8.35. Now, technology, kind of where everything is at right here. Um, for this particular one right here, if we wanted to extend our geometry off, we can click on the geometry button, kind of what we covered in the profile, and we can extend it out. Uh, I forgot I'm working on metric here. One millimeter and one millimeter. Get us enough if we go straight down. Nope. Five. 
So we'll do 20 millimeters. Sorry, guys, I'm not used to working on metric here. So I know that when my T-slot cutter comes down, which is this red circle here, I'm going to clear any material. Now, we don't have to add that as an extension. Um, we can also control that by the links page. But this gives me a little bit better uh, or a little bit clearer picture on my extensions of my start and my end so I can see my tool and what my, my tool path is going to be doing there. Okay. Now, um, do we want to run cutter comp on that or not? You have that option there. The roughing strategy. So what the roughing strategy we can do is we can do multiple passes. So let me kind of get zoomed in here. And let's say with that uh, T-slot cutter that we want to take this in multiple passes. We can't take it um, all in one cut, and we probably cannot take it all in one cut minus the uh, 0.5 millimeters that we left on the wall. So what I can do is I can actually do a clear offset right here, and I can offset that tool path out, kind of like what we were talking about in profile. So if I don't know what that value is, I can just click on the offset button, and I can click on my outer edge right there. So basically what we're doing is we're going to take that geometry that I chose, and it's offsetting it over to this line right here, and it's slowly going to increment in on how much I tell it to step over. So right now, um, we have a wall offset of 9.85 millimeters. Um, if we want to take really light passes, we could step over with one millimeter passes. Now, when you guys do this clear offset, we've offset it out to the 9.85. So that's from right here to right here. So that first initial cut, when it comes through, it's actually going to be cutting air, or we'll just be barely nicking that. So what you guys can do is come in here, and we can just do an 8.85 and minus off that one millimeter of step over that we want there. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Okay, so working our way down, thin wall strategy. Um, with the thin wall strategy enables you to machine thin walls while removing gradually the excess material of either side of a wall. Now, since we're not working on a thin wall feature, I really don't have to worry about um, that functionality right there. But um, so basically, if we're running a thin wall, um, as it gets up to that thin wall, it's just going to take a lighter cut for you. Now we can do the option of one way or zigzag. Um, for this particular cutter, we want to use one way. And then we can also choose an overlap. So if we're looking to overlap the tool path as it's stepping down. Okay. And then do we want to start at the top and work our way down to the bottom? Or do we want to start at the bottom and work our way up? Or we can do middle to the bottom and then back up to the top or middle to top to the bottom. So you guys have definitely have a couple of um, options right there for you. Um, this particular one, we'll just shoot for middle to bottom. Okay. And then I'm not, uh, we'll, we'll pretend that we have a very tight tolerance on from this dimension to this dimension here, but our floor and our wall uh, we have a little bit more tolerance right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to leave 0.5 millimeters on the wall and to come back and just clean up that wall finish, that additional uh, 0.5 millimeters left over. And with that, I can also set my cutting order. So if I want to start from the top and just work my way down for my finish pass, I have that option right there as well. Now, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, Eric has got a question in regards to whether or not there's a good rule of thumb for the step over amount when you're using a T-slotting cutter. Um, good rule of thumb. Well, good. And uh, I guess it would be step over amount and then uh, also any differences in uh, material selections and how that step over is affected. Well, the best thing, um, usually you don't want... Um, a zero overlap. The reason why is because if we do a zero overlap, this cutter in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to worry about it. But if we do a zero overlap, um, we'll probably get lines going through there. 
um, just like if we were to do a pocket operation with a zero overlap. You'll always have that little thin line going all the way through. So uh, usually with your T-slot cutters, the manufacturer will recommend um, how much to take per pass and how much to overlap depending on the material that you're using. So I mean, that's a little bit geared more towards the tool manufacturer because some of these uh, tool manufacturers can take heavier cuts um, with a smaller overlap where a lot of it depends on the size as well. Um, and a lot of it will depend on your, uh, your relief shank. So if we have a really thin relief shank right there, we obviously cannot push that very hard. Does that kind of help out, Eric? And since we're talking about that, we'll do a uh, 0.5 overlap. Hopefully that uh, makes sense for everyone. Okay. And so we got all our information filled out for our technology. Now, our linking, um, how do we want to arc in and arc out? Or um, we can do a tangent, normal, um, user-defined, couple different options for you right there. So let's just see what we have here. So you can see, you get a side view here. Here, well, I'll do a top-down view first. So here's our clear offset. So we can see that we're moving over this one millimeter that we specified right there. So it's taking a pass, comes out, and then goes back over and starts to pass again and moves over that one millimeters. So since our cutting length is large enough, we can do this in looks like three passes, working our way all the way through. So let's take a peek at our solid verify here. Don't want machine sound. At least not yet. Okay. So we're arcing in, taking our first initial pass. Oops. Missed the end for you. So we can see. We have completely removed all the material using my 3D mouse is not working here. Um, clear note all that material using that um, T slot operation right there. Now, if I hop out of here for a second, um, if I need to take a little bit heavier cut and not do so many step overs, I can definitely make this number larger here. Now we'll reduce the number of cuts right there so you can see. First initial cut coming in there, second cut coming in there, third cut coming in there, and then doing the finish pass for in there. Um, and if we are going for a really tight tolerance with um, the width of our T-slot cutter, then we can turn on our finish for our floor and our ceiling. So a couple different options there for you guys. Um, if you do get the option or an error saying uh, tool path cannot be calculated, uh, we run across this every once in a while on the support side, is usually because your T-slot cutter is too thick to fit inside the area. So if our T-slot cutter is 8.35 millimeters or uh, thicker, it will not go in there and do the tool path for you because it knows that it cannot fit between the ceiling in the floor of that and it will prompt you telling you that you need to basically need to get a smaller tool to fit in there all right any questions with this particular one right here not seeing anything in the questions panel okay so i think uh that suggests everybody's uh taking it in quite nicely <laughs> now um, if you guys do have the option um, or the ability to do a zigzag, that will definitely uh, clean up your path a little bit. So you can see now we just have one entrance 
and one exit, except for the finish pass, where it just has to uh, go back over. So the zigzag does help out uh, a little bit with uh, cycle time as well. Okay. And since we don't have any questions on this one, the isn't this so much fun? T-slot, there's just so much good stuff in here. Sarcastically. Right. So this particular part right here, we have a T-slot that is going all the way around the entire part here. You can see um, everything, or the T slot goes all the way around. So, um, got everything set up, and we will go ahead and do our T slot operation here. And we will grab our geometry. And do our constant Z. Alright. And we'll go ahead and grab a T slot cutter here. And I've already got one pre-selected. So we got a uh, two inch in diameter with a 157 uh, flute height. And then after you define that tool, Kevin, uh, Scott's mm -hmm. got a question. Uh, he wants to know uh, what the use fillet size feature does. Okay, yep. So, Go ahead and grab our ceiling here. And our floor. All right, so the used fillet size, are you talking for the last cut? I would assume. Uh, I believe so. Um, yeah, if he's talking about something different, uh, he can specify. But yeah, let's okay. go over the uh, fillet size for last cut. Okay, so with the fillet, you can actually, so on this particular part right here, we can see that we have a fillet on our external corners. Um, if there was no fillet there, what we can do is specify that we want a external fillet of whatever size that you guys would like. Or if we are doing a T-slot on an internal, then we can do an internal in corner in there. So that way, uh, instead of coming into our part file and maybe the engineer didn't add it in there, but they wanted to see a fillet in there. And instead of uh, going back to the engineer and having him update the model, uh, you guys can actually do that right inside the operation itself. So, Okay. So we we'll go ahead and run compensation here and going to do another rough cut with a clear offset. And I'll go ahead and grab the outside of my part. And let's go ahead and do a 0.25 step over. So I'll just come in here and just put this right at three inches so we're not caught in air for that first one. And then with this one, I am gonna do a spiral. So what the spiral will do is instead of, well, let's just do one way and I'll, I'll show you guys the difference here. So I'm gonna save and calculate here. So you'll see right here, we are starting over here and it is just coming in and arcing off. And then it will move down and then arc in. Well, what we can do is we can keep that tool engaged with the material um, at the entire time by switching it over to spiral. So if I turn that on, what it will do is for every 360 degrees that it goes around, um, it will be spiraling, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. It would be spiraling in to the workpiece by the 0.25. So these coming in, we're actually spiraling, um, let's see, how can I get a better representation? So as we're going around the part, it's slowly spiraling in towards the center. Does that make sense for everyone? As it's coming in there. And that way, um, we're not, when we do a lap around and then come over, 
and then shoot in, we're just not that initial jolt in um, is is not there. So we're just as it does 360 degrees going all the way around, we are working in by a quarter inch. Okay. Now, Greg asked the question. Well, what happens if I want to move? I don't want it to start right here on the corner. Um, I would like it to start somewhere else. Great question, Greg. So what we can do is click on our start position, and I can tell it that I would like it to start over here instead of right on a corner. I can start right in the, the middle of middle of my workpiece. So you, you guys do have the option right there, and that's going to be the same for uh, your T-slot as well as your profile. Um, you guys have that option there to modify where that chain starts. So now if I do a save and calculate, you can see that we're starting over here now versus on a corner. Okay. And we'll do a overlap of 100 thou. And maybe I'll do this one at edge. Okay, and we're doing cutting depth to one way, leaving a uh, half inch on the wall. And we'll do, go ahead and do a finished pass just on our wall, cutting from top to bottom, cutting top to bottom. Now, I'm not too thrilled about this uh, start here. So what I'm gonna do is go to my link and I'll tell it to do a distance of 0.2. See if that gets it up. There we go. That's a little bit better. So now we're not starting over here and then re uh, that start point was uh, for our clear offset and it just starts taking the cut all the way around. So this way it gets it off the part a little bit here. So now if we go ahead and do a simulate, solid verify. I'll try to single step this through for you guys so it doesn't go too fast. So you can see we're starting off with that nice light cut and it's slowly gonna work its way into the workpiece. This down. And you can see that we're going a little bit deeper and deeper as it works its way across. And using that spiral feature, we're keeping in constant contact with the material. And now it went to do the second layer. In the last level here. Oh, guess there's one more. And now it's doing its finishing passes, taking off that leftover five thou that was there. So if we want, we can go ahead and do a stock target comparison here. You can see that we are yellow, so we're all up to size. So we're good there. Um, if we want, we can go ahead and play this through on our machine sim. What you got, Greg? What's that? So what you got? Uh, nothing. Oh. <laughs> actually play all these operations through for you guys. And operation simulate. All right, so let's get a good side view there. And this picture will get a good side view of the opposite side. 
and we can kind of see our machine going over here. So probing up the part, and now we're doing our T-slot. Well, this is running. Uh, Ronnie had a question about uh, if you're using a square T-slotting tool, but you have some fillet features on the inside of that T-slot, um, could you cut this T-slot profile uh, using this process, or would you recommend a, a different operation type? Um, if you have the radius on the T-slot cutter, um, obviously we can do that. Um, if you are running a radius in there, what I would probably recommend is uh, to get the majority of the material out of there. Let's go ahead and do it. So let me turn off that toolpath here. And yeah, I think the uh, question assumes that there's no radiuses on the tool itself. Yeah. So let's go to our features. Fill it. Well, it looks like I was working on metric. And that might be a little on the large side. Something like this, I would assume. What did you say, Greg? You got uh, confirmation on that. Okay. So here is how I would do it. Um, I would use my same geometry, same tool, same levels, or my levels would change up now. So now my ceiling would be the bottom of that radii, and our depth would be back where we were before. Save and calculate. So we got one done there. Now. We still have quite a bit of material to take off at the top for that radius. So what I would do in that particular case, and I'm just kind of thinking on the fly here. So if there's some, um, Greg, you can hit me up if, I, if you see a different way. So then for my second T-slot operation, I come and do this as my ceiling. And this as my floor right there, and I'd actually change up my geometry, and I would grab, do our constant Z, uh, let me just double check my levels real quick, ceiling, or Ah, it won't let me so do you're it. Saying your tool's, yeah, your tool's yeah. too big for that uh, depth. So what we can do is we can lie to it. Um, so my tool is 157, 1578. So if I come in here and do 15, oops, what is it? This inch metric is killing me. Um, what is fifteen seventy eight? Five, seven, eight. Four point zero eight millimeters. So let's say four point zero eight millimeters and I'll turn off that top half and let's go ahead and play this through go to a solid verify
Now that'd be a good way of roughing it using this particular type of T-slot process. Yep. Um, now, if you really wanted to follow that radius, um, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves in terms of class schedule. Um, but there is HSS undercut, um, and we can also use a regular HSS operation as well. That would be able to achieve the same results, but follow those filleted surfaces. Yep. So now you can see I have my ledge. So here's where my start of my radius would be, and then arc down to here's where my end of my radius would be. And if we do our stock target comparison here, we can still see we have material in there. And just because uh, Ronnie loves to see this in action, we'll just go ahead and do a quick HSS, and then we will wrap it up. All right, so we'll do, like Greg said, we're getting a little ahead of the class here, but I'll kind of show you guys how it would be done, at least how I would do it. Grab the radiuses there. Got all my faces. Do a Start curve, constant C, and my end curve. Grabbing that same cutter that we're using, the T slot cutter, and which is over to a spiral. And we'll do a 0.1 millimeter step over. Ah. Link, use lead in, use lead out. And All right, so now I'll get zoomed out for you guys. And you see we're slowly spiraling up, achieving that radius in there for you. So you can see now the more, I mean, we're using a square. T slot cutter here, so there's no radius. So we are going to see a little bit of lines in there. And if the more that I add to my toolpath parameters for my maximum step over, so if we make this number smaller, those lines would disappear to get a smoother finish. So hopefully that's what you're uh, looking for, Ronnie. Let's see. Um, the advanced tab. Randy, were you trying to do an HSS or T slot? My computer's off. T slot. <laughs> Um, Greg, you got any idea what he's? Uh, not exactly. Um, I wouldn't recommend it with the, this operation if you have the fillets, other than the uh, roughing strategy that you already showed. Okay. Well, Randy, uh, I'm just not 100%. Um, if you want to hit me up, shoot me an email, and then I can give you a call, and I can. Uh, I'm just not quite understanding what you're uh, looking for there, but. You guys do have the option to do wall draft as well, but wall 
draft is going to be a standard angle and not for a radius. So, all right. Any other questions? That Eric, Greg. I see a couple other guys in there. Any questions before we uh, end her off for tonight? I don't see anything coming through, so. Uh, hopefully that answered uh, everyone's questions and I uh, got something out of it tonight. Uh, I know there's not a whole lot in T-slot and a little bit of dry and boring, but um, <laughs> is it hopefully got uh, it sure It sure beats doing things the old way, though, trying to uh, calculate your cutting depth manually and using a profile operation. That is true. Yep. So, <laughs> I know this one was uh, a breath of fresh air. Uh, when I had to use it in shop. So. Yep, yep, yep. So, all right. Well, with that being said, uh, we do oh, have a class. We've got uh, one question coming in at the end. Okay. Uh, what is the easiest way to accommodate cutting length tolerance? Cutting length tolerance. Um. My ceilings are off on plus or minus two. Um, okay, so to accommodate a very tight tolerance, what you're looking at, Eric, and uh, lower is usually on the money. My ceilings are, oh, my ceilings are off by plus or minus 0. 0.2. Well, um, one thing I can recommend Eric, are you using a collet holder or are you using a, a hydraulic or like a milling chuck style holder? Because what I'm thinking, well, okay. So with the ER holder, if you have run out, that's definitely going to affect um, your, because that tool will be rocking back and forth and you might the width might be a little bit off here and the from let's say this face to this face might be off as well. Um, with those collets, they are a little bit known for having um, run out on there. So if you could switch over, yeah, <laughs> if you'd switch over to hydraulic, that'd be uh, really good. Um, and yeah, we need those tight tolerance for those uh, awesome wallets that you make. But uh, the, uh, yeah, one, make sure that the cutting length on the tool, when you measure it out, you're measuring it on each and every flute, and try to get a good idea of whether or not the tooth are staggered. I, I know that can contribute to it. The floors are usually on the money because you're touching off the tool based off the bottom of the tool, so that's not a. That's probably why your floor is coming out the way it is. But if the teeth are off even a little bit, it can affect those calculations. So I would say measure each tooth and uh, possibly just run that tool through once and uh, measure that slot with and make sure that matches up with what the uh, manufacturer is uh, suggesting that cutting length should be. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that stayer tooth. Yeah, that's real common. Um, didn't even think about that too, but yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing what you could do if everything looks good there is uh, for your titanium ones that you do, Eric, just because I know the parts you guys do there, uh, for your wall offset, your ceiling and your floor, you can make this number, um, you know, maybe do like one thou, and then you could do your number of passes instead of just doing one pass going around, you could do maybe two passes going around, um, and that, that might help as well. So, don't have a good way to measure that tolerance. Are you saying you don't have a good way to measure the uh, cutting length? <laughs> okay, so um, if you want, uh, go out and get a, I can say cheap, but get a cheap uh, micrometer would be the best way. Um, it would be probably the only way that I could think of. To, uh, to accommodate that, but a couple different options there for you. Um, definitely the number of passes on those titanium holders that you have would probably help out a lot. So does that help 
out, Eric. Hopefully it helps out. Okay, cool. Uh, well, as long as I have everyone here. Um, oh, here. If you, if you guys didn't make it over to uh, SolidWorks World this year, here was our crew. If you guys don't know who who or, or what we look like, myself right here, Sean, which is our COO, Ken Merritt, which is, I would say, our, our head uh, tech guy, and Mr. Peyton and uh, Sydney right there. But... Um, Um, just botching up this. Uh, here it is. You guys are looking for something really awesome. This is uh, some of the parts that Eric does. These wallets are amazing. So I just want to throw that out there because I see Eric's in there too. But um, both myself, Greg Payton, a couple other guys on the tech team use these wallets and they are awesome. So. <laughs> But um, then that's just decade minimalist. But um, all right, with that being said, I will um, wrap it up here for tonight. And next week, we do have um, translated services. And then after that, we will be to start getting the ball rolling with Solid Cam 2020 of what's new in there. So a lot of cool new features in there. Um, if you guys are looking for 2020, it is on the website, Freya. Um, in the customer portal. So definitely check it out there. And as always, you guys have my email address um, and uh, you guys uh, give us a call or shoot me an email. I'm here to help out in any way possible. So anything else, Greg, before we wrap it up? No, I think that covers it. All right, guys. Well, I thanks, guys. thanks again for attending and we will talk to you guys next week if we don't talk in the meantime. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.